Hello again everybody, welcome back. This is quite an exciting lesson. It's kind of building on a topic I'm doing with my class all about temperature and the weather. So we're going to be calculating temperatures today. It's a bit of maths, a bit of science and a bit of something we call social studies, which is looking at the world and the environment around us. Lots and lots to look at today. So strap yourselves in. We've got a lot to do. But the first part, just a bit of chat really. If you didn't already know, this is one of Scotland's most wonderful and famous people. This is Judith Ralston. She is our weather presenter. She presents on the BBC all the time. And this is her presenting the weather. Now, when you look at this map, what do you see? Firstly, do you know what it is? What country it is here? It's it's a map of Scotland. Oh, Scotland. You probably, probably see that with Edinburgh and Glasgow. Then up towards the north, there's Stornoway and Inverness. And then all the way up on the islands is Lerwick. Now, when you look at a map like this, you can see rain clouds. Uh, you might see some snow clouds as well. You can see, now there's little white circles with wee arrows coming off them. Can you see them? Can you spot them? Hmm. Yeah, that's talking about uh, wind, actually. But we're not going to look at wind today. We're looking at temperature that means how hot or how cold a place is now can you see those big numbers the numbers in green are positive numbers and numbers in blue are negative numbers that means they've got a wee minus sign in front of them so we're going to come and look at these in a wee sec it's also probably a good time to know that it, judith herself has a book coming out it's aimed at children it's all about clouds and, and climate change and that's called What's the Weather? So, one to look out for. Anyhow, here we go. Uh, so, temperature, what is it? Well, a temperature is the way of telling how hot or cold something is. And we measure the weather in the UK in degrees Celsius. You might be able to see there on the top left picture, there's a girl pointing at a weather gauge, which might be in her school, I'm guessing, outside. Can you see on one side of the weather gauge, there's a C. That stands for Celsius. That's how we measure. And then on the other side, there's a F, an F. That stands for Fahrenheit. Now, that's another way to measure temperature. But in the UK, we don't really use Fahrenheit very much. That's more of an American thing. So we measure temperature by degrees Celsius. Now, on the top right, that very sunny place there, that's Mexico. And right now, today, I looked at the weather, today it's 22 degrees in Mexico. That's quite warm. I could take my hat off. It'd be roasting there. It probably looks a bit like that. Uh, and Mexico, if you look at the map, in the bottom left, is where the green dot is. Now, underneath that, though, is Finland. Finland is minus five degrees. Very cold, very, very chilly indeed. You can see all the snow there. Definitely need more than just this hat <laughs> to keep warm there. And Finland, if you look at the map, is where the blue dot is. Hmm. Now, I mean, when you might have noticed there that Mexico was kind of in the middle of the map, Finland was up high. And that's actually really, it really is why uh, hotter places are hot and colder places are cold. I'll explain it this way. This is a map. A map? No, it's not. It's a picture, <laughs> okay, of space. Now, space doesn't actually look like this. Earth is not that close to the sun. It's not even mildly that close to the sun. And there's two planets in between. There's Mercury and Venus. However, it is ser does serve as a good illustration, a good drawing to show you why countries in the middle of Earth are hotter than countries on the top. If you lived right in the middle of the Earth, you can see the distance from Earth to the Sun. Now, if you lived at the top or the bottom, you can see the distance from the Sun. It's longer, isn't it? So that means that the Sun has to travel further to heat those areas up. So anywhere on the top or the bottom of our globe is colder than places in the middle, basically because it's something called the equator. It goes all the way around the centre of the Earth, and that is closer to the sun. And just to kind of prove this point, the, the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth was 57 degrees. And that was in El Aziza, which is in Libya, Africa. 
that's the green dot on the map. Can you see as well, that's kind of in the centre of the map. It's not high, it's not low, it's in the centre. And the coldest temperature ever recorded was at the South Pole in Antarctica. And it was minus 89 degrees. Oh, goodness me, that makes me feel awful just thinking about that. And that is at the bottom of the globe. Can you see where the blue dot is? There we go. So, now that we've got a kind of a basic understanding, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate some weather temperatures today. But to do that, we need to look back at negative numbers. Now, hopefully you've already looked at that lesson in negative numbers. If not, you can go back, have a look at it now. However, I'm going to do a wee recap so you might be able to pick it up from here. Here we have a number line. On one side of the number line, I've got positive numbers. One, two, three, four and five. But on the other side, we've got negative numbers. These are numbers that are lower than zero. So if I was to start at five, five, <laughs> there it is, and count backwards, I've got five, four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Sometimes people say minus one, minus two. That's absolutely fine. Minus, negative, same thing, really. So, got a quick maths problem for you here. We've got three take away five. What does three take away five equal? Well, to do this, we had a wee strategy we used in the last video, but I'll show it again. We need to find the number three on that line. Can you find it? Number three. There it is. And now we're taking away five, so we have to jump back five spaces. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. What have we ended up on? What number on that number line? Negative two. We've ended up at negative two. So three take away five is negative two or minus two. Either or. Here's another example. Do you want to pause the video see if you can do this one? Go for it. Okay, provided you have paused and you've had a go at that, let's look at it. So we've got minus one add three this time. So we need to find minus one and then we're going to add on three. One, two, three. So the answer is two. There we go. Now, ready for the next task. I've got four problems for you here. Two take away five, minus four add six, five take away seven, minus two add six. Now you can pause the video and use the number line. You could draw your own number line at home. Could you solve those four math problems for me? Go for it. Pause the video and give it a go. If you're a wee bit confused, remember you can always rewind as well. Okay, have you paused? You definitely have. You've given it a go. I'm trusting you. Okay, right. Let's have a look then. Here's your answers. Two take away five is minus three. Minus four add six is two. Five take away seven. Minus two. And minus two add six is four. How did he get on? If you got a wee bit stuck or a wee bit confused, just go back, look at it again, pause the video now, have a wee look. Where did you go wrong? Count up again. Mm -hmm. If you did great, Excellent. We'll move on. Okay, so back to the weather then. A big part of the weather present. Oh, my hat's going the wrong way. Sorry. A big part of a weather presenter's job is to calculate the change in temperature. For example, it's usually very cold in the morning, but by the time you get to lunchtime, it's got much warmer. And so weather presenters need to calculate the difference in temperature. So I've got a wee task for you here. I've got um, two maps of Scotland. The map on the left, that, that way, yep. <laughs> the map on the left um, shows the temperatures at six o'clock in the morning. It's quite early. It's quite early. I don't think many people get up at six in my class. <laughs> so we've got minus two, minus three, minus one, and one degree. And then it's showing you the temperatures at six o'clock at night. So it's two degrees, two degrees, five degrees, and six degrees, that's around about L uh, London? No, Glasgow, <laughs> where that six degrees is. So using the number line below, I'd like you to try and calculate the change in temperature. Okay, let's do this first one together then. We'll start up in the islands. Let's 
so difficult when the cameras are reversed. Up at minus two. Can you find that? Six o'clock in the morning, minus two. Right. Let's get my wee pen out here. So we're at minus two, and we're going to calculate the change in temperature to two degrees by six o'clock at night. So to do this, what we need to do is we need to find minus two on our number line. Here it is. And then we need to find two on our number line as well. And then what we need to do is we need to count how many jumps there would be between the two numbers. Right, minus two. Let's go. We've got one, two, three, four. So there's a change in temperature of four degrees. It's gone up four. So we could say it's added four. Pause the video now. Can you give those other three temperatures on the map a go? Can you calculate the change in temperature? Go for it. Definitely done it. I'm trusting that you've went and paused the video and you did it. Magic. Right, let's look at it all together then. Let me just quickly rub this out. Okay, so we'll start with minus three to two degrees right in the centre of the map. Let's go for it. So we've got, oh, I'll change the colour of pen. Minus three. I need to find that on my number line here. And then it's going up to two degrees here. So let's go for it. Let's count how many jumps we've got. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got a change in temperature of five degrees. There we go. Magic. Right, next one. Grab my rubber again. Oh, there we go. We'll start with minus one and then up to five degrees. So we know where that is on the map. Towns or cities you would see around about there. See Dundee, Perth. I'm from Dundee. Yeah, so you'd see those ones there. So we're looking at minus one to five. So I need to find minus one. There it is. And five. All the way up there at the top of the line. Now let's count how many jumps we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got a change of six degrees. Six. Okay, and last one then. Hope this is all making sense. Remember, if it doesn't, you can always rewind it as well. Last one, we've got one degree to six degrees. Now, if I look at my number line at the bottom, it's not actually six degrees here, so I have to add it on. <laughs> Let's add it on. So we're starting at one degree. Here it is. Let's count up. We've got one, two, three, four, five of five degrees. There we go. Now, final wee task for you to do is, this is Kosher, she's another uh, BBC Scotland weather presenter. Um, I think it'd be great if you could go onto Google and type in BBC Scotland weather. And when you do that, the first link that comes up will show you the weather forecast for today. It's a lovely wee two minute video and you can look at the temperatures and see how they changed throughout the day. What's the temperature like in the morning? What's it like in the afternoon? What's it like late at night? And you can see how they differ. Anyway guys, thank you so much for joining in with this wee lesson. Hopefully we've learned about temperature. We'll understand why some countries are warm and some countries are cold. We know that we measure temperature in degrees Celsius. And we understand how to calculate the change in temperature throughout the day. Good stuff. Have a lovely day. See you later.